Welcome to African Farming Digital. Animal nutrition plays a key role in animal production. If you want to get the best price for your animals, you have to make sure that they are fed well and properly. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, animal nutrition. I'm with Praveen Tuarika. We're here at Fast Fontaine at Le Mans Agricultural Services. Praveen, thanks for having us. Always wonderful having you here. Welcome, Tavi. Praveen, here's a thing that I notice when I'm a consumer, or as I'm a consumer is that when seasons change, the availability of milk is also affected by that. So please explain to us how that works. Absolutely. So you'll notice, especially between your summer months and your winter months, so your warmer, warmer climate and your, your colder climate, you will find a definite drop in productivity, especially when it comes to your milk production. Uh, it's, it's severely affected by the, sea, by the season. So as soon as you're starting to go into the autumn and winter seasons, the milk production starts to drop. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but it generally happens and it's a natural event that occurs. So now how is a farmer going to plan um, in terms of production to, to mitigate that kind of uh, risk? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's where it's important to understand how you're going to feed your animals. So your, 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 your feeding program through the year must accommodate for the changing in seasons. You know you're going to experience a production drop during the colder months. So you've got to ramp up your, your nutritional requirements for your animals. And, and that applies to both your, your, your milk uh, production as well as your, your meat production. And, and that applies to sheep and that applies to goats and that applies to cattle as well so it's important to understand that it's a natural cycle so farmers must be aware of it and plan your feeding scheme according to that. Now I've heard of um, successful fodder flow programs so how can you ensure that small-scale farmers also implement successful feeding programs to their farms? Now absolutely it's it's critical like I said you know they've got to understand that when the change of seasons occurs or other events for that matter that are going to affect the, the rate at which the cattle are producing milk for example or the beef production so they've got to implement um, programs to, to keep track with that. And the only way they can do that is understanding the cycle, depending where they are, of course, where they're farming, and to have conversations with people who have the experience in that area. So you'll have your nutritional specialists that they can speak to within your agribusinesses, but in your feed companies as well, they'll be able to give you the correct advice in how to improve the concentrates, etc., so that you have a proper mechanism which you can use to ensure stability within your production and the farms. So I'm a small scale farmer. I've got a couple of goats and a couple of sheep, but I actually don't know what to feed them and when to feed them. So where do I start? So you've got to have conversations with the farmers around you, have conversations with the agribusinesses, have conversations with technical experts in animal nutrition. But very importantly, it's you must get the community of practice in that area, understand what they've been through, what they've experienced in the past. What solutions have they come up with that is that are able to support the small scale farmer that you are? Um, Obviously, you want to use the best possible remedy for, for the problem, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to break the bank. So look for cost effective solutions, but that's going to come with conversations and learning as you go along. Now, consumers are becoming more and more aware of what goes into the food in terms of antibiotics. Yes. So how can farmers actually keep up with the pace of this? You're 100% right. Consumers are a lot more aware. The speed of information these days is contributing to that awareness, not in a negative way, but certainly what we need to be aware of is that the consumer is not um, unnecessarily and unwittingly being fed these antibiotics and growth hormones that are being fed to animals. So it's very important for farmers to be aware of that and take pride in looking for alternatives to that so that when, cons when a consumer is enjoying food produced at a particular farm, they know it's either hormone free or antibiotic free as an example and find alternative ways to manage pests and diseases when it comes to animal nutrition. Praveen, thank you so much for your time. You're most welcome. There you have it. What you put in is what you get out. Make sure that your animals are properly nourished so that you get the best price for them when you sell. Thank you so much for watching African Farming Digital. And remember, we farm better together. Get your free copy of the African Farming Magazine now at your nearest co-op and at africanfarming.com. Get the necessary cover for you and your family in the event of unforeseen misfortune. The African Farming Protector Plan offers you comprehensive funeral cover for your entire family plus extended family at an affordable cost. Our product also offers benefits such as monthly discounts on groceries, discounted bus tickets, ambulance services, and trauma and assault assistance, to name a few. For more information on the African Farming Comprehensive Funeral Plan, SMS African Farming to 45269 and get the peace of mind you deserve.